universe is fine-tuned for life. Most physicists, and even die-hard atheists like Richard Dawkins, agree. Physicists, he says, have calculated that if the laws and constants of physics had been even slightly different, the universe would have developed in such a way that life would have been impossible. The obvious question this raises is why? Does fine-tuning require the existence of a fine-tuner, or as Dawkins somewhat disparagingly puts it, a divine knob-twiddler? Or could there be an alternative explanation which bypasses the need to invoke that G-word? My belief is that fine-tuning points to the existence of God. But before I explain my reasons, let's take a moment to consider the arguments for alternative explanations and ask if there's any evidence to support them. The first alternative explanation is the one-way argument. The proponents of this argue that there may be only one way for the universe to be, and this is it. Their future hope is that physicists will one day discover the cosmological equivalent of the Holy Grail, the so-called grand theory of everything, and this will show that indeed things could not have been any other way. According to this argument, we shall see, states Dawkins, that the six key numbers may be no freer to vary than is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. In answer to this argument, the first thing to underline is its speculative nature. At the time of this recording, there is no grand theory of everything, and no actual evidence to show that there is only one way for the universe to be. But the second thing to note is that even if the cosmological holy grail were discovered tomorrow, it doesn't rule God out of the equation. Let's take Dawkins' analogy of the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. Christians would argue that the reason the ratio is not free to vary is because God made it that way. Similarly, we may discover in the future that the constants of the universe may not be free to vary, but that does not by implication rule God out of the equation. It may simply mean that God made it that way. Rather than destroying the argument for an intelligent designer, it would amplify it because it would show the designer was even more ingenious than we first thought. As difficult as it may be to fine-tune the universe by adjusting all the individual dials, it would be even more difficult to create an underlying law of nature that then forced all the dials into these specific positions. OK, so that's the one-way argument. Now, a second explanation which seeks to avoid the G-word is what I've called the many-ways argument. Some physicists are beginning to point to the possibility that our universe may not be the only one, that it may be one out of a possibly infinite number of universes coexisting within a vast multiverse. In this scenario, the laws and constants of each universe vary, and given the vast number of universes, statistics dictate that some will be fine-tuned for life. You may be pouring out your cornflakes in the morning to find that one bears a striking resemblance to a 1954 Bentley, but given the vast number of cornflakes produced and eaten on a daily basis, one doesn't need to invoke a bored cosmic car enthusiast working in a cornflake factory, whining away his free time designing one to look like his dream car. It would be entirely logical to conclude that this was a random occurrence. Now, it's the same with the multiverse. Given the vast number of universes out there, we should not be surprised to be sitting here contemplating our own existence. God does not even need to enter the equation. Now, attractive as this option may be to many atheists, the bottom line is that, once again, it lacks evidence. As Rees, himself an atheist, confesses, this perspective, while compellingly attractive, is still conjectural. The input assumptions that predict multiple universes, he says, are still speculative. Yet, for the sake of argument, let's assume this theory is true. Does it rule God out of the equation? Does it put him out of a job? Once again, no. For the simple reason that the proposition of a multiverse, far from eliminating God, simply puts the question of his existence back a step. We now need to ask, where did the multiverse come from? As Robin Collins explains, a many-universe machine, which is essentially what a multiverse is, can only produce life-sustaining universes if it has the right components and mechanisms. It is highly unlikely that such a universe-generating system would have all the right components and ingredients in place by chance. In other words, the multiverse would need to be even more finely tuned than our own universe. 
Now, unless you're going to propose a multi-multiverse, there would still need to be an intelligent designer to make the process work. OK, so those are the explanations which seek to avoid the G word. Now, why do I believe that word, God, solves the conundrum? Let me answer that by explaining that I prefer to live my life on the basis of what I know rather than what I don't. If I postulated the existence of invisible traffic and chose to live according to that belief, despite lacking any evidence, the truth is I would never cross the road for fear of being run over. Similarly, when belief in God is the obvious answer to the incredibly fine-tuned state of our universe, the one that stares us in the face, I would prefer to believe it rather than opting for arguments based on speculation and conjecture. Now you may respond by saying, I don't see how God is the obvious answer. In my last video, I used the illustration of a man sentenced to death by firing squad. Ten highly trained marksmen take aim and fire. Amazingly, all ten of them miss. What is the obvious conclusion? It is not that you just happen to live in the one universe out of an infinite multitude in which all ten highly trained marksmen happen to miss by chance. Rather, it is that for some reason they all deliberately made the choice to aim wide. In other words, their aim was off by design. The fact is, before believing that the incredibly fine-tuned state of our universe could be put down to statistical probability and our universe being one among many in a vast multiverse, you would conclude that it was designed. As Greg Easterbrook has said, the multiverse idea rests on assumptions that would be laughed out of town if they came from a religious text. As laughable as that may be, however, there are some who believe that proposing the existence of God to explain the fine-tuning of our universe is even more laughable. Listen to Dawkins. Any God capable of designing a universe carefully and foresightedly tuned to our eventual evolution, he says, must be a supremely complex, improbable entity who needs an even bigger explanation than the one he is supposed to provide. Now the problem that Dawkins and many who might agree with him have is that they fail to understand what Christians mean when they talk about God. Let me explain. First, when a Christian speaks of God, we are speaking about a being who is not constrained, not limited or defined by the laws of physics. He's not bound by the rules, he made them. As far as God is concerned, normal rules do not apply. He's not part of the natural order, but greater than it. If we were saying that God were bound by the laws of nature, as Dawkins' statement implies, then we would be saying that those laws are greater than him. And if we're saying that, that they're greater than him, we would no longer be talking about God. Second, you cannot demand an explanation for God's existence, as Dawkins does. Just think about it for a second. If you were able to explain God's existence, you would have to conclude two things about him. A that he was not eternal, in other words, he had a beginning, and b, that there was something greater than him, the explanation. Once again, to put it succinctly, God would no longer be God. So if you think the concept of God is hard to get your head around, that's just the point. God, by definition, is incomprehensible. If he were anything other, he would most likely be a mere human invention and no more worthy of our worship than Winnie the Pooh. The truth is, our universe is incredibly fine-tuned for life. It may well be that there is only one way for it to be. The discovery of a grand theory of everything may just be around the corner, but this does not rule out the existence of God. On the other hand, it may turn out that our universe is one among many. Maybe a vast multiverse does exist, but that would only require even finer tuning and again begs the question of an intelligent designer. Both these explanations are, however, highly speculative and currently lack any substantive evidence. Based on what we know now, the most logical and reasonable assumption is not that we are here by chance, but that we are here by design. 